I get the customer experience and the personalization, but you've at Chewy done a great job of overlaying analytics and technology on top of that. How, how are you able to get the right brain and the left brain collaborating effectively in a single company? Yeah, this is uh, it's a great question. I think you have to embed it in the culture of the organization. Uh, what happens is you again go back to go back to the point where I was talking about input metrics and output metrics. What happens is most companies end up measuring themselves in terms of output metrics. Revenue is an output metric. Profit is an output metric. Uh, however, if you're selling a product, ASP, the selling price, the price of the product is an input metric. The number of units that you're selling is an input metric. When you apply that sort of a concept to customer orientation, it can actually do magic. For example, I'll start with the, with the output statement. We have shown via data that customers who interact with our experience have higher LTV than customers who don't interact with our customer service. And so in that way, what is it about our customer service that actually is able to drive such output? Well, one, if you call a call center today, are you expecting your phone to be picked up in two phone rings via a, by a live human being? No. You're expecting an automated voice line. Well, we don't have those. We have human beings who pick up the phone. The metric that we measure ourselves is most indicative of the engagement that we want to deliver to our customers, which is we don't measure average handle time. You know what average handle time is? As the word suggests, a call center metric average handle time measures the amount of time that an agent spends with a customer. And then the planning engine takes that into account and it plans capacity for the call center because it says, I know how many minutes you're gonna spend at the customer, I know how many customers are calling in, I know X number of agents that I'm, that I'm gonna require. We don't have AST. What we do is we, on the board when you come inside Chewy, you're gonna see a service level metric that says 98% of our calls are answered in less than four seconds or less. That's the metric that, that we're after. We actually encourage our agents to be able to interact with our customers as long as they need to solve the problem. And, and so, you know, the, the, it's, it's about which metric do you need to measure, which metric do you want to measure, and being relentlessly focused on not taking your eyes off the ball on that particular metric. Would you uh, compare yourself at all with Zappos? We would compare ourselves to Zappos. In, in, in fact, I, think, I believe the founding team initially looked at Zappos as a benchmark uh, of uh, service index and service orientation uh, when launching or studying Chewy's uh, customer, customer orientation and customer service models. Uh, there's a metric that uh, you use, uh, which is um, net sales per active customer per year. Is that the most important metric in uh, Chewy? Net sales per active customer, translated simply, is essentially share of wallet. What's the percent, uh, what is the net sales that we can extract per customer household? When you look at pet, just to put, put this in perspective, the pet industry is $120 billion in the US. There's 90 million active customer households. If you divide the two, you get a net sales per active customer or share of wallet number per household. That's roughly $1,200 to $1,400, depending upon how you're doing the math there. For us, so what does that metric indicate? It indicates customer engagement. See, when, you, when you're, uh, there's a, uh, is this primarily a business class that's in here? Yeah. Okay. When you're, when you're uh, launching a business or running a business or growing a business, when you're forecasting what revenue you want to generate, come at it from a customer point of view. The number of customers that you acquire times the dollars that each customer spends on your platform essentially forms the potential for the top line that a company can gather. For Chewy, we've just said, if you, if you, for those of you who are subscribers to uh, online video subscription services, Apple, Hulu, Netflix, you pay $12 per month, times 12 months is $144, is, that, is the net sales per active customer for you on that particular platform. For Chewy, it's $1,200. So not only does it showcase, and, and, and how does it ladder up? It ladders up in the mission statement of being the destination. 
Because people spend 60% of their dollars on food and supplies. They spend 30% of their dollars on healthcare metrics, and they spend the rest of it on non-healthcare services. We, in, inside the company, have a goal to say, what percent of our, companies are buying, or our customers are buying pharmacy from us? And when they do, what incremental profit that, does that generate per customer? That incremental, incremental profit allows us to fund incremental initiatives in the company that then allows us to launch the next initiative that we weren't offering the year before. Customer engagement is the most fundamentally important input that actually drives the output or the revenue flywheel for us. Because think about it. Today, Chewy has 20 million active customers. If I stop acquiring one single customer at this particular point, our net revenue will grow at a rate of 4 to 8% CAGR for the next six years. That's a powerful statement. Not many companies can actually say that. At, when you look at most companies, net revenue declines year one to year two, and companies deploy what they call customer relationship management to be able to retain customers and to be able to develop customer bases. We don't spend money there. We spend money sending you portraits. For us, net revenue doesn't drop. It grows sharply year one into year two, and then it grows modestly at 4 to 6% rate for the next nine years. When you look at cohorts of customers that we acquired in 2011, 12, 13, they're spending north of $1,100 with us. Customers that we acquired in 2017 are spending north of $600 on the platform. So we're really good at aggregating spend.